Hello, what's up, Captain Hooter? Well, right here is Marcos from Below Deck. You know me. Wake and bake is my favorite meal of the day. So see you on board one of these days. Happy sailing. Stay healthy. Stay happy. Big hugs from me. Hope to see you soon, brother. Bye. It's Captain Hooter. Bom dia. Доброе утро. Доброе утро. Итюсер Сырдинан. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hooter here, coming to you high and alive, and I'm here in a Greek restaurant learning how to make grapes, grains, and olives in this very cool virtual restaurant. The good news is you don't have to come here. Today, we have one of the best chefs in the world coming to you. We have Chef Jordan Wagman doing a beautiful wake and bake recipe for us this morning. Check out this interview and I'll be back in a few minutes and show you how my recipe is going here. See you in a minute. Good morning, good morning. Captain Hooter here, coming to you high and alive on another beautiful morning, ready for a proper wake and bake. And I'm hungry. I don't know about you guys, but I got something special. We got the master, Chef Jordan Wagman. Jordan, you're here. Feed us. Here. We're starving. <laughs> I'm starving. And I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm recovering. It has been a long, long, long week and a half, man. That 420 bled into 422, 424, 426. <laughs> it's been a long, long, long week. So I am in recovery mode. And that's our focus today, my brother. I love it. That's experience. Experience is what you have there. I think so. I think <laughs> I think so. It's either experience or it's all the gray here. Gray hairs are just telling my age, man. I'm yeah. feeling I can. I've always said, you know, I can work as hard as anyone. I can go as hard as anyone. But it's the recovery days that are just not the same anymore. Yeah, yeah I hear you. Uh, so. uh, it, right? Run around with Ed Rosenthal uh, uh, for a little while and uh, you can find out just exactly how old you really are. <laughs> <laughs> so today I am waking up. I need to recover. So we are focused on, as I said, recovery. I am going all in with terpenes and CBD today. I'm exhausted. So I need to bring myself back to life. And terpenes have always been really essential for me in you know, in my preparation for meetings, in my preparation for uh, keynote speaking opportunities, different essential oils, different oils have always really impacted me. Peppermint has really calmed me, but limonene and, and, and oils very high in that citrus, the, the, the tangerine, the orange, but limonene at the, you know, at the forefront, I would pour it into my hands. I'd rub it together to sort of heat it up and really activate those oils. And I'd put it in front of my mouth and my nose and I'd breathe it in and it would really, really calm me down. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make a chocolate sauce. So I'll, as you see here, I have a plate of strawberries. We're gonna fill this bowl with a CBD and terpene infused chocolate sauce. Really simple, raw completely. We don't need to heat anything. We don't even need my lovely stove top. But all we're going to do is we're going to add it to a blender. You can absolutely use an immersion blender, right? One of those handheld immersion blenders. The difference between using that and using this is the higher the RPMs in, an, in, you know, in a blender, the, the smoother your mixture will become because you will, it just breaks it down a lot easier than this immersion blender. Really simple. You can absolutely use an immersion blender. Very few ingredients. You ready? We have cacao, raw chocolate. That's it. It's just ground raw chocolate. 
you can add as much or as little as you want. I'm going to add a bunch because this and the next ingredient are going to be our thickeners. So this is almond flour, raw almond flour. It has not been toasted. All I'm looking for for the almond flour is to thicken because typically you would melt your, excuse me, you would bring your cream to a simmer on the stove. You'd pour it over some chocolate. You'd melt it together. That would be your chocolate ganache or your chocolate sauce and you'd serve it here and it would thicken, right? The chocolate would thicken it. In this instance, we're using the almond flour and the cacao, the, the cacao to thicken this. So I'm just adding about a half a cup, a half a cup of almond flour, right? So we've got right now equal parts almond flour and equal parts cacao. Favorite ingredient. You know, what's really important to note about me is that seven years ago, I removed gluten, dairy, and refined sugar from my diet and began consuming cannabis for the intention of becoming healthier. Since the age of 12, I was diagnosed with psoriasis and autoimmune disease, and I've struggled my entire life. I have really, and, I, and I, I'll go into it maybe later uh, on, on later segments, but you know, I, I found the first piece to my health puzzle, and that was the sunshine. I spent a year and a half of my life living in a tent at the Dead Sea in Israel. Every day I'd wake up, I'd roll a joint, I'd go sit in the sunshine for 14, 15 hours a day, and my skin got better. My psoriasis improved dramatically. That's why I moved to, to, to Florida and I moved to Colorado. And I would always travel to the, to the warm climates because it would always help my psoriasis. And I never realized that there were other ways to heal myself. Seven years ago, I changed my diet and I began consuming cannabis. Although I've smoked joints every day since I was 12, I never realized that cannabis and diet could have such a big impact. Within 60 days of changing, within 60 days, 30 pounds melted off my body and my psoriasis began to improve. So subsequently, I don't use refined sugar. Maple syrup, as a good Canadian boy, is really the only refined sugar, excuse me, the only sweetener that I use in my kitchen. In my kitchen, I will use agave from time to time. I'll use honey from time to time. But maple syrup is my go-to. And it's really for two reasons. One, I'm a good Canadian boy and we have some amazing maple syrup. But I can do anything with maple syrup that I can with refined sugar. I can bring that down. I can evaporate all of the water. And what are you left with? Maple sugar. So I can create maple candy. I can make, you know, my chocolate. I can make absolutely anything with maple syrup. That's why I have it. My favorite non-dairy milk. All of my desserts, all of my, all of my desserts are 100% plant-based. I love to sort of, and I've had to recreate and sort of redesign how I make all of my food stuff now because I don't use refined sugar and flour and, 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 and all of these ingredients and dairy, especially that I would use in everyday classic French cuisine. So although oat milk is a wonderful alternative, almond milk, and really any non-dairy milk can work in this recipe, coconut milk adds, especially the coconut fat that sits at the top of the can. You've got the water and the fat that have separated a lot of the time in coconut milk that sits on, on the shelf. I use that top layer, that beautiful, beautiful coconut fat. And that too, as this, you know, sits and starts to, you know, the almond flour and the cacao start to absorb everything. It creates this incredible mouthfeel that is very, very similar to anything you've ever had with cream and the chocolate that you know to be ganache. So we're gonna put this onto our blender. And again, if it's too thin, if it's too thick, we can easily rectify these things. In my kitchen, I have a saying, it's sort of your get out of jail free card. It's, it's supposed to be that way. Meaning if it's a little bit too thin, you know what? It's supposed to be that way. A little bit too thick today, you know what? I felt like making it a little bit thicker today. Because as I said, I'm in recovery mode, dude. I've been cooking for <laughs> days and days and days. We're gonna add a little bit of salt. I have <laughs> smoked salt here. So I put, I was smoking something the other day on my, you know, on my smoker. Actually, they were my signature dish carrots. And what I did was I ended up taking a small little stainless steel bowl. I filled one with salt, 
I filled another one with apple cider vinegar and another one with olive oil and I smoked. And now this is the most sensational oh. smell. Smoked apple cider vinegar, oh. smoked salt, smoked olive oil, smoked avocado oil. And now you have these incredible ingredients that are right at the ready that can add this really unique flavor profile. I'm gonna add what a little bit wood? of salt to this. What was the Pardon? wood you used for the smoking? What was I, the wood? I just, I, I'm, my favorite always is apple wood when I can, oh, I couldn't yeah. get it. So I was using cherry wood chips. Okay. But so my, my smoker is really simple. Like I actually wait for in Toronto, you know, it's, it's been winter time, right? So we're getting into the spring and all of the trees have sort of, you know, with all the wind and everything and all of the snow, they've, you know, a lot of the branches are on the ground. So I go around and like this camp guy, you know, like this, this <laughs> You know, like I'm in the middle of nowhere, collecting all the wood and bring it back to my house. And so I use charcoal and the local wood, and then I use my wood chips to flavor it. And so I just really do it low and slow. And I love having these ingredient ingredients on hand because they, they're, they're a differentiator, right? Like you're making a chocolate, a beautiful chocolate sauce, but now we've added smoked salt, a really cool element. So now let's add some CBD. So this was made for me. Now I, I'm very specific in how I talk to people about what I suggest they do and how they should be infusing food and beverage with cannabis. Number one, safety is at the foref forefront of everything that I do. If I live in a legal market, I subscribe to buying the cannabis that I'm infusing into your food and beverage. Why? Efficacy. I can tell you when I buy something that to two decimal places what the potency is in that cannabis product. If you are infusing your oils and butters at home, and I know that there's tea check and I appreciate there are, other, there are some checks and balances, unfortunately, they're not the same as sending it out to a lab and having those tests available to you so that you know and you can say with certainty to those you are cooking for, this is the exact dosing within a small tolerance, of course, of the food stuff you're eating. This is the potency. This is the, what's in your food stuff. You can't. You can't do that. I have four liters of coconut oil downstairs in my refrigerator that I infused for me. I'm the only one that uses that. I will never use that to cook with four clients. I will always use something that's been purchased, such as this. This is what I would use. And this is actually Medifarm Labs here in Canada. And I love them. They're a great brand. This is, a, you know, it's a great CBD oil. But that's what I will use to infuse into food stuff for people that are paying for my services. For people that are coming over, for people that are enjoying an experience with me, I want to be able to tell them there are two MIGs in this. There are two mig milligrams of this cannabinoid here. There are five you know, milligrams of this cannabinoid here, or there are only terpenes, so on and so forth. I'm very specific, and I think we should, in, in, you know, in future segments, really focus on, um, on dosing and the importance of creating that repeatable experience. Absolutely. So I've got something here. This is for me. I'm eating this. But I know, because this has been sent out to a lab, this is actually 55% pure, meaning that one milliliter is going to have 550 milligrams of CBD. Okay? It's go. very powerful. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very powerful. Okay, so here we go, easy peasy, and I'm adding my terps. Why am I adding this here? Listen, I could add them into my shake in the morning. I do every single day. I, I am huge in, on, on taking cannabis, but it's not about smoking it only. It's about taking it so that it's, this is so powerful. It's about taking it so that it really, A, impacts me. We're an end of one, the way I need it to, a lot of the time, that's through my tummy. That's how I get the best benefit for, 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 uh, from my cannabis. THC, on the other hand, smoking. That's how I reach, you know, that's how I get max benefits. All right. So we've added our terps. We added limonene to this. I figured, hey, we're having strawberry, strawberry and lemon, lemon and chocolate. I mean, it, it all sort of goes together. We've got our CBD in here. It's only one milliliter right yeah. it's, there's nothing like so we're not worried about flavor 
We're not worried about, hey, this is going to be really cannabis forward with maple syrup, cacao, and you know, we could add vanilla, we could add a million other flavors to this, you could add mm. coffee, whatever you want. But with all the flavors in here already, you're not going to taste anything. Here's a really important tip in your kitchen. All of the blenders come with a little hole on top. There's a little plastic part that's always removable. In this instance, you wouldn't have to remove it because it's a cold mixture. But if we were to heat this mixture up and transfer it to a blender, you have to remove the middle portion of the blender. Why? Because when you are blending something warm, all of the steam needs somewhere to escape. If you don't give it somewhere to escape, all that pressure builds up. And when you release the top from the base, you know where that mixture ends up? <laughs> You know how many times you have to have that happen to you in your life for you never to do it again? One time. <laughs> One time. One time only. So it's really, really, really critical. You definitely, and I always do, when I'm pureeing something, because when something's hot, it will definitely splatter. I'll always take a towel and I'll always cover it, but the steam can escape. Okay, that's what's really critical here. I'm less concerned about it. And as a matter of fact, I have my little doohickey poker that if this gets a little bit too thick, I can be moving it around. Now, before I get started, because it's going to be loud, if I feel that it's too thick, what do we do to water it down? Or we can add water. We can add more coconut milk. We can add whatever liquid we want. To thin, we can add more flour. But I have a feeling, because I'm not going to care, that it's going to be perfect. <laughs> perfect. OK, so here we go. We're going to puree this. It's going to be loud for a quick second. But hey, it's going to be worth it. Let's make yes. sure we're on. And already, the color is amazing. Okay. So the importance of emulsification, okay? When we're creating cannabis infu infused food and beverage, I talk about creating homogenous mixtures, meaning that the cannabinoids, the terpenes, whatever you're infusing into your food stuff, that it's equally or evenly distributed. That's what creating homogenous mixture means. This is an emulsification, meaning all ingredients are properly suspended with one another, including the cannabis, including the terpenes, meaning that when I pour this in here, it's the same percentage. And again, there's always a tolerance, always yeah. a tolerance. This is batch cooking. We haven't individually dosed something here where I can tell you there is exactly 550 milligrams in this one small bowl because I've taken the milliliter here and put it into here. That's not how I cook. That isn't cooking with cannabis. That's just infusing your food with, with some cannabis. That's not cooking with cannabis. This is the difference, right? Using it as a flavor enhancer, like the terpenes, for example. As I said, the cannabis is not going to impact our flavor here, but the terps will. That's a technique. Doing, you know, adding too much terpenes will truly ruin your food stuff, especially when the terpenes are as powerful as the ones that I use. So we have something here, and, the, and you know what? I'm going to actually puree it for one more second. The texture is beautiful, but I want to make sure that it's properly... Gorgeous. And I want to sort of draw this analogy, which I really think would, sort of drives it home. Think about making a cup of coffee, or hot chocolate or tea, and you decide to, I can't get it off, and you decide to infuse that, right? You decide to take your distillate like you have here and put it into your coffee, your tea, your hot chocolate, whatever it is. Look at this. Look at oh. This. Hello. How gorgeous that is. And so you, you, you add that cannabis distillate, that cannabis to your coffee, your hot chocolate tea, and, and oil and water. I mean, let's just talk about oil and water. If it's oil-based, where is it going to sit? It's going to sit right on top, right on the surface. Someone takes a sip and says, you know what? I don't love the hot chocolate. I'm not going to drink it anymore. 
You know what you have to say to them? I'm so sorry, but you just drank all the cannabis in that hot chocolate, in that food, in that coffee, because it was sitting right on top. If that mixture is properly homogenized, is properly emulsified, if it's properly homogenized and you have all of the ingredients, specifically the cannabis, evenly distributed, now you can say with some certainty, as I pour one into here and another into there and another into there, that there are, in this instance, 125 milligrams per cup. Now, again, let's be clear about something. Number one, I struggle with an autoimmune disease. That's why I take this amount of CBD, CBG every single day, every single day. But not everyone needs to take this dosage. Again, when you come for a 10 to 15 course infused experience with me, you are not having more than 20 milligrams of THC in a three to four hour period. And I know that sounds low, but the reason is because bioavailability. Because when you remove refined sugar from the process and you are creating food stuff, 10, 15 courses, using the best seasonal ingredients you can, you're creating great food stuff, you're putting in front of people and you're adding cannabis, the cannabis becomes much more bioavailable. When you add junky ingredients like the corn syrups and other refined sugars that you find in all cannabis food stuff, your cannabis becomes much less bioavailable because your body wants to absorb all that refined sugar before it absorbs the cannabis, period. That's my approach and my premise to creating food stuff. And that's why when you come for an experience, it's a whole flower experience. It's about raw flower and terps and, and, and all cannabinoids and cannabinoids in their acid form. And it's not only about quote unquote getting you high. The reason that everybody leaves here having such a wonderful experience, whether you are new to cannabis or you are someone like you and I who, are, who can consume 50, 100, whatever it is, the reason that it happens, the reason that they all leave happy is the entourage effect. The reason they all leave happy is because the entourage effect is so much bigger than just even the cannabis. You take all of those cannabinoids, all of the great food, all of the great people in a great, oops, in a, and that will happen each and every episode, in a great <laughs> location. And that collectively that experience that high that euphoria being with people that you care about and, and it's unlike any other experience and and that's what i subscribe to in cannabis it's the whole flower experience so that's why today i'm going to start my day with my nice you know strawberries dipped into my limonene and uh and uh and my CBD, look at how that coats beautifully. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. Mm. Yes, I. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> mm. Makes you oh, dance. No. That's right. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, those are so good. And when you put the <laughs> almond flour in there and you buzz it up like this at such high RPMs, you're not tasting, there's nothing gritty in here. It's just a really, really, really fresh, good morning chocolate kiss. So how was your wake and bake, Captain Hooter? Not nearly as good as yours, buddy. Dude, that is sick. That looks so fantastic. And I'm trying to reach right through the screen to get some of that. It looks absolutely amazing. I, I a couple of questions for you. Um, you talked about the um, uh, almond versus oat. Um, is there yeah. one in particular that you prefer? I mean, will you instinctively reach for the no. almond first? No, I think I love, I love knowing that I can create all of my food stuff with any ingredient or any limitations I'm given. For example, when you come for these experiences, you're keeping in mind that everything starts gluten, dairy, and refined sugar free. So if you're a celiac, I'm a celiac, you know, wet dream, truthfully. <laughs> and, and, you know, you come here and it's, it's just like, 
you know, it's, it's the perfect experience for these people. You have a nut allergy. I can make all of these things with oat milk versus, you know, versus almond milk, but I'm going to give you a tip. And I think this is really critical. You can make all of these oat milks, you know, nut milks at home. What's really important, and I didn't demonstrate it today, and I will demonstrate all of these in subsequent shows. But what's really critical is to toast those oats, toast those almonds. You toast them in a dry saucepan, right? Just in a nice big dry saucepan and or saute pan or even on a baking sheet if you want in the oven, but you toast them first. And how do you know when they're when they've been toasted? Because your nose knows, your nose knows. It becomes aromatic. As soon as something becomes aromatic, you know you've started to release all of those essential oils, right? And that's all where all the flavor's coming from. The other visual, the, oh, excuse me, the other sort of sensory sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, giveaway is, is, is visually, what does that look like? And has it changed color? And oats and almonds both start blonde and they end up very toasty, nutty, brown, you know, in color. And that's ultimately what, what you're looking for. You know, when you're, it, but the same premise applies for all spices too. If you're going to use, if you're going to make a spice rub for meats, fish, whatever, you, cauliflower, I did it the other day, dry pan on your stovetop, and, and you toast those spices. And how do, you, how do you know when they're done? Well, as soon as they become aromatic, they're done. They're not gonna change color, but as soon as they become aromatic, they're completely done. So that's the trick here, is you always want to release maximum flavor by toasting those oats, toasting those almonds, toasting those cashews, toasting anything that you're going to make milk from first. And then you get the almonds and find their little tiny nipples and pull them, right? And that's how you that's, get the milk. That's, that's the secret, Captain <laughs> Hooter. You're now divulging my secrets. <laughs> Takes those little tiny fingers on each one. Dude. <laughs> the almond whisperer. I love it. I really appreciate you taking the time this morning and giving us this really fantastic little quick and easy recipe for anybody's breakfast. Um, this works out so perfectly, and we are very excited to be able to see you coming back to do more episodes like this in the future. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping, and we haven't, we haven't got this locked down, but you know, we've got to get you locked into getting one of those Oculus because you do have a kitchen now waiting for you inside the Hooterverse. And uh, you know, I think it would be very interesting to be able to get some people in in house. You could be there in house in the kitchen, and we can set up a screen for you in there so that you could be just like you are here, and people could hang out with you live. Oh wow! I love it. 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 I can't yeah. wait to be doing more. I can't wait to get involved. I can't wait to be here with you, Captain Hoot Hoot Hooter. Thank you, sir. And uh, enjoy your recovery and uh, have a, a, a hopefully uh, your 420 will now come to a beautiful conclusion. It really is. Thank you so much. And you know what? And, and it's, if it's OK, I will. I wouldn't mind just saying this. And I said it in an interview the other day. And 420 has become something of a day of reflection for me. Um, you know, my friend said yesterday, you know, it's always been a day of protest and celebration and, and, and since legality, you know, here in Canada, I really look and, and since it saved my life, truly, um, I look at 420 as this day of reflection. Um, my father's going through a, oops, I just had a strawberry seed fly out of my mouth. <laughs> my father, it's real life and real drama. I love you know, it. My father's going through a brain tumor, has a brain tumor right now, and mm -hmm. came back from Florida Sorry. to Toronto. And cannabis has helped to really give him a, a sense of normalcy. And uh, cannabis is a, is, is a day of, of uh, 420 is a day of, of, of reflection for me, of thanks. But let's not forget that we have tens of thousands of people sitting in prison for a plant that we get to celebrate that has helped to heal me that has helped to give in, that has helped to give me my life back that has helped to give my father at 80 years old the sense of normalcy again but we have tens of thousands of people rotting in jail for the same plant 
It just doesn't sound right. We all need to do something. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to go and get back into doing something right after I finish your strawberries because they're just sitting there and, and I'm just sitting here just thinking they're sitting there and I, I need to get some strawberries. <laughs> Thank you, my Good friend. Good to see you, my friend. Much love, much respect. That was excellent. Thank you. Yes. Yes. That's right. Oh, look at him. Oh, yeah, baby. That's right. Who makes the best? That's me. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for coming, mostly. everyone. That was pretty good. All right, that's it for us. Thanks for coming in for our Wake and Bake. And don't miss our show on Saturday with Brandon Allen from the Tricom Institute. It's going to be an awesome show. We'll see you guys there. Bye. It's Captain Hooter!